Hello dear student, I am Professor Devashish Bose, Head, Department of Criminology and Forensic Science, Dr. Hari Singh Gaur Vishwavidyale, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh. Today, I am going to present a lecture of BSc 3rd semester on the unit General Idea and Examination of Animal Poison Part 2, which has been jointly prepared by myself and Ms. Priyanka Pade, PhD scholar, a UGC GRF at Department of Criminology and Forensic Science, Dr. Hari Singh Gaur Vishwavidyale Saga. So, let's start our discussion while taking a look at what we are going to learn today. Module 1 will be Introduction to Animal Poisons are Spider, Spanish Fly, Bee, Wasp, Centripedes, Lizard. Module 2 will be Preliminary Examination of Animal Poison. Module 3 will be Confirmatory Examination of Animal Poison. Module 4 will be its forensic importance. Module 5 will discuss something about case study and Module 6 will be our conclusion. So, now we start with Module 1 that is Introduction to Animal Poison, Spiders, Spanish Fly, Ants, Bees, Wasp, Centripede, Lizards. I think you all have seen spiders at your home. They make net. Have you seen it? Or I think you have watched the movie Spider-Man. So let's start what these spiders are. Spider makes net to catch their prey. Many of them are harmless in the sense that they do not attack unless they are provoked. Two varieties of spiders are available which are capable of producing severe toxicity. They are as follows. Black Widow or Hourglass Spider. These spiders are found all over the world. The female of this species is larger and more poisonous. There is usually a red spot on the dorsal surface of the shiny black body. The venom is predominantly neurotoxic and therefore does not produce much local necrosis and some person experience no other symptoms except a sharp pinprick. Active component of venoms, however, are latrotoxin, the most active component of the venom, binds irreversibly to the nerves and causes release and eventual depletion of acetylcholine, norepinephrine and other neurotransmitters from presynaptic terminals. Signs and symptoms. Generally, common signs and symptoms occur within an hour and so Painful cramps spread from the bite side to the large muscles of the extremities and to the trunk. Other features may include salivation, diaphoresis, vomiting, hypertension, trichardia, labored breathing, anxiety, headache, fasciculation, paresthesia, hyperreflexia, urinary retention, uterine contractions and premature labor. Rhabdomolysis and renal failure have also been reported. Next, we see violin spider or brown reculus. This is called violin spider because it has a violin shaped mark on its brown colored back and the female is more dangerous. The venom is mainly cytotoxic. It contains enzyme like an esterase, alkaline phosphatase, protease and other that produce tissue necrosis and hemolysis. Signs and symptoms. Initially, the bite is painless or produce a stinging sensation. Within the next few hours, the side becomes painful and protic with central induration surrounded by a pale zone of ischemia and a zone of erythema. In severe cases, the erythema spreads and the center of the lesion becomes hemorrhagic and necrotic. A black shirt forms and slows several weeks later leaving an ulcer. Treatment for spider poisoning. Initial treatment should be local cleansing. Elevation of the effective limb or the part is helpful in preventing the spreading of venom. Analgesic, antihistamines and antibiotics can be administered. With this we come to the end of spiders. Now we see Spanish fly. It is also known by different names like Cantharitis, Vesicatoria, or blister beetle. It is a special type of insect related poisoning associated with this creature. 
The active principle is a highly irritant substance called cantharidin, which is insoluble in water but soluble in alcohol, fats, ether and chloroform. Cantharis may be administered in the form of powdered betel or the tincture or the active principle. The powder cannot be easily administered as it floats from some time in any liquid with which it is being mixed and attract attention due to its shining green particles. When this powder is applied externally, it causes a blister or vesicle. This is the reason Spanish fly is also called as blister beetle or cantharis vesicatoria. Signs and symptoms When it is administered orally, it causes severe inflammation of the gastrointestinal and genitourinary tract. It also produces burning sensation in the throat and stomach. Other signs and symptoms include nausea, abdominal pain, vomiting of blood-stained material and diarrhea with blood and mucus. In the male, persistent and pale for erection of the penis may occur and there may be frequent seminal emission. In females, there may be enlargement of the vulva and abortion may occur. In fatal cases, coma with convulsion usually precedes death. Fatal dose and fatal period. 10 gram of active principle may cause death. Generally, 1.5 gram of powder cantharidis is regarded as a fatal dose. Death usually occurs within 24 hours. Treatment. Stomach wash may be carried out with lukewarm water. Demolitions may be given in any quantity. Now, we see another type of insect, that is bees. There are different type of bees which ranges from small to large. Some of them are harmful. The bumblebee, large in size and makes a buzzing sound, is the only harmless one in their group. Honeybees, which are grey or red in colour, can sting, but do so when threatened or harmed. They have a barbed stringer, which contains two lancets, which when exercising sting, these lancets become firmly anchored to the human skin, resulting in the disengagement of the whole apparatus from their abdomen. The eviscerated bee soon dies, but the reflex action of the attached muscle may continue to inject venom for some time. Venom. Honeybee venom is epitoxin, is a bitter, colorless liquid. It is produced in the abdomen of the worker bees from a mixture of acidic and basic secretions. Epitoxin is acidic, pH 4.5 to 5.5. A honeybee can inject 0.1 mg of venom via its stringers. Apotoxin contains apamine, a mild neurotoxin. Melatonin, most responsible for local pain. Peptide 401 causes mast cell to degranulate, releasing histamine and vasoactive amine. Phospholipase A2, most destructive component, degrade phospholipid, cause destruction of cellular membrane. Hyaluronidase increase endothelial permeability and dilates them, causing spread of inflammation. Degrades extracellular matrix. Histamine causes allergy. Dopamine and non-adrenaline increases pulse rate. Now we see wasp. Of the various type of wasp, the yellow jacket are most ill-tempered and may sting without provocation. They are generally predators and thus more aggressive. They are generally predators and are thus more aggressive. In compared to wasp, hornets are usually non-aggressive unless their hive is disturbed. The stringer of the wasp does not have barbs and hence can easily be withdrawn and reinserted. Wasps and hornets, unlike bees, are scavenging insects and can transmit infection during sting. They feed on insects, anthropods, flies and even caterpillars. Wasp's body is sleeker and more streamlined for hunting. It is smooth, slender and shining with a narrow vest connecting the thoracic and abdomen. Wasp has slender legs shaped like cylinder. Venom composition for wasp and bees direct toxic effects are mediated by mixture of low molecular weight compounds such as serotonin, histamine, acetylcholine and several kinins. 
Polypeptide toxin in honeybee venom include miltin, which damages cell membrane, mast cell degranulation protein, which causes histamine release, apamin, a neurotoxin, and adolpin, which has anti-inflammatory action. Enzymes in venom include hyaluronidase, which allows the spread of other venom components, and a phospholipase. Signs and symptoms. Uncomplicated sting causes immediate pain and local oedema and swelling that subside in a few hours when multiple sting produce it can lead to vomiting, diarrhea, generalized oedema, dyspnea, hypotension and collapse. Rhabdomolysis and intravascular hemolysis may cause renal failure. Treatment. In case of bee sting, stringers embedded in the skin should be scrapped or brushed off with a blade or even a fingernail, but not removed with a forceps, which may squeeze more venom out of the venom sac. The shite should be cleansed and disinfected, and cold compress may be applied to slow down the spread of venom. Intravenous epinephrine may be administered by slow push in the profound shock. Antihistaminics are beneficial. Large local reaction may require a short course of oral therapy with glucuronoids. Fluid reconstruction, oxygen, intubation and vasopressors may be required. The patient should be observed for 24 hours for recurrent analysis. Centipedes. The word centipedes come from Latin word centi which means hundred and pedis means foot. They are commonly anthropods belonging to the family or the class Chilopoda. Some species of this creature can be hazardous to human because of their bite. They are elongated metameric creatures which have one pair of legs per body segment. Centipedes are known to be highly venomous and often inject paralyzing venom. Despite the name, centipedes can have a varying number of legs ranging from around 30 to more than 350. Centipedes have not even number of pairs of leg. So, as mentioned above, they are not exactly 100 numbers of legs. It is estimated that around 8000 species of centipedes that exist throughout the world, out of them, only 3000 are being described. It can be found in a wide variety of environments. Certain centipedes are found naturally in our houses and outbuildings, whilst other, such as the long, thin geophilomorph species, are usually only found in the soil or the land. They are also found in leaf litters, under stones, and in the dead wood, and inside logs. Centipedes are among the largest terrestrial invertebrate predators. Centipedes are generally carnivorous. Venom, the toxins in centipede venoms are imperfectly understood till date, but cytolysin, proteinase, and lipoproteins have been isolated. The venom is a lipid toxin complex with properties uh, facilitating local cellular absorption and penetration, which leads to more serious tissue injury. Usefulness. In some countries of world like Laos, Thailand and China, they keep large centipedes in liquor for a period of time. This custom is allegedly the part of the traditional Chinese medicine, often contributes significantly to the invertebrates predatory biomass in terrestrial ecosystem. Signs and symptoms. The bite is very painful and may cause severe swelling, chills, fever and weakness, but less likely to be fatal. Bites can be dangerous to small children and those with allergies to bee sting. The venomous bite of larger centipedes can include anaphylactic shock in such people. Small centipedes are generally incapable of piercing human skin. Even non-venomous centipedes can frighten humans due to their dozens of legs moving at the same time. So, because of this property in literature, there is a very famous quotation from a 19th century a Tibetan poet warned his fellow Buddhist, if you enjoy frightening others, you will be reborn as a centipede. Treatment Rinsing the bite in cold water, if not painful, use ice packs at the bite side. Give papin, an enzyme that breaks down protein. 
give painkiller in a severe case the effective limb or the part can be elevated and administer diuretics lizards my dear students i think you all have seen lizards at your home or anywhere in the garden also so they are generally gray or blackish color many sticks on wall and may many of you get frightened by them when you see them moving around it's scary also many of us might get frightened by lizard bite but do you know most of the species do not cause serious health problem out of around 3000 species of lizards worldwide only two species are classified as gila monster and mexican bearded lizard are known to be venomous in india both of the above mentioned species are not present so don't get scared but aware of that all people generally believe that the breath or the urine of the lizard is poisonous when it accidentally falls in food they believe that the food articles or food item becomes poisonous and not suitable for consuming signs and symptoms after a bite from a lizard leaves teeth mark a minor scrap or a punctured wound without other symptoms following are the signs and symptoms of lizard poisoning pain at the site of bite swelling at the site of bite spreading of the swelling slightly reduced blood pressure punctured wound on skin envenomation by poisonous variety occurs by contamination of the wound with venom which is neurotoxic in nature changes in level of consciousness such as unconsciousness confusion or extreme sleepness numbness or tingling at or near the bite site and venomation results in the tissue injury treatment wash affected area and seek medical attention immediately give painkiller and antihistamine in a severe case the effective limb can be elevated and administer diuretics with this we come to the end of module 1 now we move on to module 2 that is preliminary examination of the above mentioned poisoning A scanning electron microscope will give the best detail of the animal poison. For morphological examination, compound or dissecting microscope. The type of insect if present on the corpse, it can be identified by available data of entomology. With this, we come to this small module, module 2. Now we come to module 3, confirmatory examination of animal poison. <laughs> The venoms of all these species mainly contain proteinous poison so the examination is generally based on immunological methods precipitin test this test is generally based on antigen antibody reaction the aqueous bite area of the victim is allowed to come in contact with antivenin the specific antivenin or polyvalent antivenin A reaction between the two is then showed by the formation of a cloudy precipitate at the line or the plane of contact. Gel diffusion test. This test is performed on a thin layer of agar solution on a glass plate, small hole and punched out in the dried layer in a particular manner that is one in the center and three or four rounded the circumference of the circle. the wash form the bite area or the serum of the victim is placed in the central hole and the antivenin in the other hole diffusion occurs in if the reaction is positive and a line of precipitation appears this reaction is completed after an overnight diffusion immunoassay techniques these methods have recently been introduced it is based on antibody antigen reaction which is a very sensitive and specific a labeled antigen or antibody is employed for this purpose that is a radio isotope other methods may also include enzyme immunoassay or eia fluorescent labeled or fluorescent group a stable free radical frat spin immunoassay The commonly used type of enzyme immunoassay are homogeneous enzyme immunoassay or enzyme multiplied immunoassay EMIT. 
The most specific technique employed in many laboratories are based on antigen or antibody reaction which is linked to a solid state carrier is also known as enzyme linked immunosorbent assay ELI assay or ELISA. High performance liquid chromatography or HPLC also used for detection of such kind of proteins. With this we come to the end of module 3. Now, we move on to our new module, module 4, Forensic Importance of These Animal Poisons. <music> Centipedes and wasps feeds on animal body and to some extent on larva present on dead bodies creating doubt on the estimated time since death. In case of lizard, the main cause of death is commonly shock due to bite or its presence in the food. Spider are venomous, but they can be identified the, by the signs and symptoms. Insect on the body may produce a lot of artifacts. The injuries caused by animal bites may be mistaken for injuries caused by ants or by abrasion. Presence of wasp on the wound may alter their size and texture, leading to wrong interpretation of instrument causing that infection or that wound. Some people may be showing irritating or show excessive fear after they see wasp, lizard or centipedes. It has been reported that bee, spider, lizard, centipede is in some cases used as a torturing agent to terrify the victim or to extract information. Most of the poisoning cases related to spider are due to accidental overdose arising out of mistaken belief in the aphrodisiac properties. Contact with skin or eyes can result in intense irritation with blister formation. Spanish fly as a homicidal poison is not common, but some cases are reported in which the powdered fly are mixed with food and being given to the victim. The shining wings of the Spanish fly resist petrification and may provide a valuable clue as to the identity of the poison. With this, we came to the end of module number 4. Now, we come to module 5, case study. Case 1, centipede bite. This is a case reported from Nigeria, reported by Hulda 1 and colleagues at Federal Medical Center, Umauya, Abia State, Southeastern Nigeria. The case is related to a 80 years old male of the Igobo ethnic group living in a rural community in Abia State of Nigeria, presented with a two week history of severe pain following centipede bite when he was working at a foundation site. Sight of the white was at the right inguinal region. Pain was sudden on onset, sharp in character, continuous and radiating to the lower thigh of the affected limb. He immediately consumed onion, believed to be antivenom property. Then he also received tetanus, toxide vaccine, antibiotics and analgesics from a nearby health center. Five days later after the bite, he discovered that the pains was so excruciating that he could not walk. He further tried another local treatment like applying fluid extract from centipede to the bite site but with no relief. There was no history of systemic involvement or cardiac symptoms, no past history of hypertension, cardiac disease or diabetes mellitus. On clinical examination, he was observed to be in painful distress. He was conscious and well oriented. The urine analysis and the blood count. X-ray was conducted. He was referred to further treatment. Case Report 2 Lizard Bite of an Indian Children The case was reported by Amar M. Takshne and his group at Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Medical Sciences Sevagram, Varda, Maharashtra. They have reported that a one-year-old girl child presented with the history of lizard bite on the right thumb. Child cries excessively several minutes after the bite. There is no history of vomiting, diaphoresis, cyanosis, fever, 
convulsion or altered sensorium. On general examination, bleeding from the right thumb, bite area, with mild swelling was present. Two small puncture wound were presented on the bite area. Child was afferable, pale, pulse rate was normal. The wound was cleaned and betadine ointment dressing was applied. Analgesic and oral antibiotic, that is in syrup form of amoxicillin, was started. No undue event was occurred or reported and the child was discharged after 48 hours of hospital stay. On follow-up, after three days, there was no evidence of infection and the bite area was healed. So with these two case study, we now come to the end of this interesting lecture. Module 6. Conclusion At the end of this lecture, you all are aware about the animal poisoning by special categories which are very important as forensic point of view because they may provide the information about the time since death and types of poisoning. Many people die due to the fear of these insects but in real they are not as much poisonous as have been thought. You have also learned about their signs and symptoms, treatment given and examination. With all this information, here we come to the end of today's lecture on animal poison. Do keep in mind what we have discussed today. It's time for you all to do some self-study. This is Professor Devashish Bose signing off. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website for MCQ quizzes LORs at www.cec.nic.in. Till then, goodbye.